Hello everyone out there. My name is Sasha. I'm in EASA's drone section. I would like to use this opportunity of today's uh, venue to provide you a little bit of a briefing and update on our work on drones. And when we speak about drones, that on Compass is the full range, from the small uh, leisure uh, drone up to the professional device. Let me start with scoping for the purpose of this meeting, for the purpose of our work in EASA, what we understand when we colloquially speak about urban air mobility. And that is that we speak about transportation systems that move people or cargo by air, obviously, in and around urban environments. So that encompasses any sort of these use cases that are depicted here, plus potentially more. It will not be new to you, or probably the, the majority of you out there, that uh, we are in the ASA differentiating between three different categories of operations of UAS. And that is the open category, the specific category, and the certified category. And that is progressively increasing with the risk of the operations involved. I'm happy to tell you that for the first two open and specific category, we have made great strides this year towards coming forward um, with the first comprehensive set of drones regulations that are uh, uniformly applicable in the European Union. And that will happen on the last day of this year, on the 31st of December, which will mark the applicability date of the new regulations 945 and 947 on drones, um, uh, which um, will then become applicable in all EASA member states as of the, the next day. We have been busy in the past recent days and weeks in developing supporting material acceptance, um, acceptable means of compliance, so-called AMC and GM material, uh, in order to support the actual implementation of those two new European regulations. And that includes, for example, uh, making use of the, I guess, well-known SORA methodology. SORA is an acronym that stands for Specific Operation Risk Assessment. Here, notably, in the specific category of uh, UAS. We've also developed in that domain of open and specific UAS two standard scenarios that allows drone operators to have a simplified declaration process of the most common use cases for drones. And as we speak, a file is circulating internally, I can tell you, uh, containing uh, another three new predefined risk assessments, we call them PDRAs, that are aimed at easing your lives out there in providing for a simplified application process. We still hope and we're quite confident that this can be rolled out still on time this year before the new regulations kick in next year. And finally, in the domain of open and specific US, we've been um, quite successful in delivering a series of webinars for NAAs, for industry stakeholders, uh, in preparing for the grounds and for the actual implementation, clarifying a, new, a number of, of issues around there. So helping everyone to, um, to prepare successfully for the implementation uh, of these new regulations. That's actually something, uh, if I may say, something positive of the COVID days. Uh, these formats were uh, initially planned to be held here. Uh, in a comprehensive setup, we've decided to make them very topical, very narrow and short NAAs, online NAAs. And the feedback we've received was, was outstanding, such that we are going to maintain this format also for the future to come. So back to the, to the slide with the three categories. Um, let me now focus on the certified category, which is possibly the category that is of most interest to the majority of, of you out there. The certified category, which includes urban air mobility, 
applications uh, is one for which we are very busy currently in, in putting together a very comprehensive European common regulatory framework and that will also include obviously VTOLs and eVTOL operations. In support of that new proposal for a European regulation, we have just launched a comprehensive study on measuring the societal acceptance of urban air mobility operations. We would like to find out from the people in the streets of Europe how the future of urban air mobility is going to be perceived. Uh, what concerns people and how do we put this in context when we develop our draft uh, regulatory material. Also, we've been supporting UAM initiatives in Europe. Um, to give you an example, we are uh, in touch with a major airport in Europe and we've entered into what we, what we call an innovation partnership agreement or contract um, and that is uh, in supporting and testing actually in a real environment the uh, UAM solutions um, in, in a sandbox environment. But the last point is really something that I would like to expand a bit more on because it is about how do we do this enormous work that is in front of us such that it comes at the right time for the use cases that need it. I mean, the regulatory framework, the rules being there, being applicable by the time the industry needs it. So we've made an attempt this year to review um, our overall basket of tasks and to sequence and structure them in line and on, uh, with what we see how the industrial development actually is in the market. We would like to sequence accordingly and we've been in talks with numerous stakeholders as regards the expected time to market of their respective use cases. So, a proposed prioritization of sequencing currently that we envisage looks like this, more or less. Um, the main thing and the main message is the, the circles that you see there would be the groups of rulemaking tasks, so a bundle of tasks uh, and you see three of those circles. So instead of having one, uh, we have decided to unpackage that and to deal with the use cases as they are considered to be deployed in real life. That slide here is intended to give you an idea, just a glimpse of the comprehensiveness of the work that uh, we have embarked on. On top of that, you see what is called the EASA Basic Regulation, which establishes EASA, including its mandate. And below that, you see the implementing regulations in the various technical disciplines, ranging from initial airworthiness through to aerodromes. Each of those are an own standing European regulation. It's a legal text. And each of those will need to be tackled, will need to be amended in order to embrace in the future our new future aviation. I'd like to also spend a few words on U-Space because U-Space has played a, a big role in, in our work, notably in 2020 and before. It was in March this year that EASA has published its opinion on U-Space, including a draft regulation. And uh, in fact, as we speak right now, there is a high-level meeting ongoing between the European Commission and um, the uh, European member states on reviewing the latest um, draft texts, on refining, on adjusting. And we are hopeful that this process will be successful. And if so, then we look forward to the next step steps in the legislative adoption of the use space regulation and potentially will be um, the next one of the next steps will be a voting which could happen in the EASA committee which is the highest level forum uh, in uh, of EASA in uh, sometime in February next year. 
with the subsequent entry into force and applicability dates that you can see here, which are depicted. These are expected dates. They are depending on the positive progress that we make. But also on use base, um, in parallel, as this regulation goes through its legislative adoption process, we are developing, again, acceptable means of compliance plus guidance material to help support the actual implementation of this new regulation. So here are all the details. Here is all the, 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 the how and what can, be, uh, what can be deemed an acceptable implementation. And that includes, <coughs> excuse me, that includes the four proposed mandatory use-based services as they stand currently, which are the network ID, the geo awareness, and the traffic information plus the flight authorization services. All those four services are intended and proposed to be provided and delivered by use-based service providers or USSPs. In the run-up of this venue here, you may have come along a video clip of my colleague Ken Engelstad, who is our subject matter expert on U-Space, who has uh, done a very nice recording. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet and who have an interest, I would like to uh, recommend that you see that video for a bit more of in-depth information on our U-Space work. One more thing that we have uh, continued working on is the EASA's counter UAS action plan, which is an activity that followed the uh, unauthorized drone encounters um, in uh, major European airports some time ago, and those events continue to happen occasionally. They have a drastic impact on the commercial operations of those affected airports. And we, are, we have been putting together an action plan in order to respond and to prepare stakeholders on their responses uh, in a better way to how, and in a proportionate way how to deal with those incidents. So, uh, one of the main deliverables that you will find published next year in the first quarter, so should be around January, February next year, is a manual is a guidance manual um, prepared by EASA with the help of an interdisciplinary uh, task force that supported us here on uh, providing guidance to aerodrome operators on managing uh, drone incidents uh, in, uh, in the surroundings of their, in the parameters of their airport. So how to identify, how to respond and um, how to close an incident. In a, pr in a proportionate way, uh, there will be bu guidance material that EASA has put together. But there's more than, ju than just this in our counter US action plan. Uh, and in 21, we for sure will continue with this work uh, and to give you a flavor um, of how this, works, this work looks. Here is our CUS action plan as it stands nowadays. On the left-hand column you see the five objectives, which range from public education to the aerodrome uh, guidance to um, safety risk assessments uh, and so on and so forth, with specific deliverables that have been agreed upon and the corresponding statuses at the right. I would like to invite you to join tomorrow an event organized by our communication safety promotion colleagues and another colleague of mine in the drone section on how to fly a drone professionally and finding out what is important for your business. So if you're a commercial drone operator, if you're an interested stakeholder, uh, please feel free to join this. Uh, you see that uh, depicted here, it's tomorrow. Uh, but you also find this venue on our this session on our website. And I do not want to leave you before telling you that whatever you have in terms of questions, please be invited to consult our freshly updated website. For example, you will find there 
a, a quite a comprehensive new set of frequently asked questions. And should none of those frequently asked questions address your particular concern or issue, please feel free reaching out to us and getting in touch with us using that email address that you see here. Thank you very much for your attention.